for subscribing to our YouTube channel and checking out our app. Our heart for these recordings is to help bring you closer to Jesus. Today at Champion Life Center Scarborough. If we are serving in spirit, not in the flesh, we don't feel tired in serving the Lord. Because the reason people get tired if they are doing it in the flesh. Again, if we are serving in spirit and not in the flesh, we, we don't feel tired in serving the Lord because the reason people get tired because they are doing it in the flesh. First, is it the spirit inspired that you do such tasks? Right? Can you raise them up for those who, or for those high-tech people, uh, they brought with them their electronic Bibles so aside from our personal things uh, mentioned, some brings uh, with us some issues, struggles, challenges in life, and attitude, right? So um, everywhere we go, we always bring an attitude with us. And the only question is what kind of attitude, right? Now, there are some factors affecting our attitude, the quality of sleep, right? Um, health, problems, um, probably problems within the family, at workplace, um, in school, at home. Um, could be fear, worries, anxiety, grocery bills, right? Or groceries and bills and so forth. So what should we bring as a church? How do we prepare ourselves coming to a celebration like this one? Are we prepared to, to, for having a celebration mode? Everyone, every one of us has a reason and means to celebrate. Are we being, bringing that joy and that excitement with us coming to church? Everyone seems to be quiet. There should be joy and excitement coming to church, right? Okay. Because we, we are in the, in the presence of God. Um, a while ago, we were just singing about how good He is, right? That's one thing that is really, you know, enough for us. It's sufficient enough for us to celebrate. Are you ready to celebrate? Amen. Thank you for that. Yes. <laughs> Are we bringing the right attitude, an attitude of thankful heart that causes us to celebrate? What will be your attitude in expressing our gratitude to the Lord, our Savior? Church, as a body of believer, we should be together ready to praise and worship the Lord, our God, who saves us. Bringing us the right mindset, uh, the right heart, the right goal and the right attitude. As we celebrate Thanksgiving Sunday, I want the psalmist to guide us how to celebrate as we turn our, our attention to the Word of God. In fact, we should do something of thanking for the Thanksgiving as well, right? We know that's going. it's a Thanksgiving Sunday, tomorrow it's Thanksgiving, but are we thanking for Thanksgiving as well? right, itself, because thanksgiving is a gift of God within the soul of the believer, which releases our hearts and minds to the highest privilege of humankind, to worship our almighty God, his son, our savior, Jesus Christ. My sermon topic this afternoon is, bring it on, the attitude of gratitude, are you bringing with you the, the attitude of gratitude? Church, let us all rise and read all together the word of God with the right attitude set in our hearts when we ought to thank God, our Lord, Savior. Psalm 100, it says, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is He who made us, and we are His. We are His people, 
and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your word, Lord. Lord, hide your servant, Father God, with your most precious blood, O oh Lord. Use me as your mouth, this Father. Open our hearts, our minds, O oh Lord, so that we will be able, O oh Lord our God, to receive your word. Protect our hearts, protect our mind, O oh Lord. Send forth your spirit. Thank you, Lord, for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Let all sit. Psalm 100, an unknown writer invited God's people to approach the Lord with joy. Known as Psalm, we can serve Him gladly because He is the Creator and we can worship Him. Thankfully, because He is good and faithful. We are declaring a while ago with, with our songs of praises and adoration about how good He is. And all people should shout praises to the Lord joyfully. We should willingly serve with happy hearts, right? We should sing out with joy to honor Him. The psalm is general call to all the earth to render the exalted praise to God, the creator, the preserver, and the benefactor of men. Psalm 100 is a psalm of the future millennial kingdom where it describes what worship will be like in the day when the Lord Jesus Christ reigns in glory and power all upon the earth. We are not in the glorious days right now, but we are in the family of God. And we are commanded to gather together as a family of believers, to gather ourselves together. And as a believer in faith and worship, Worshiping his church, right? Hebrew 10.25 says, Not forsaking our own assembling together, as is the habits of some, but encouraging one another, and all more as you see the day drawing near. With that in mind, let, us, let it be said that this psalm tells us exactly what everyone ought to bring to church when they come. For us to be able to bring the attitude of gratitude, we need to bring it on the right spirit. We need to bring it on the right service. We need to bring it on the right submission. We need to bring it on the right sacrifice. Psalm 100, many of us probably memorized this in a children's Sunday school. It's brief. It's concrete, straightforward. Plus it it gives us a specific direction as to what God would have us to do. It says, Shout for joy to Yahweh, or shout for joy to the Lord. Serve Yahweh with gladness. Serve, worship the Lord with gladness. Know that Yahweh is God. Know that the Lord is God. Enter His gates with thanksgiving. If you notice, they are all Action verbs. Well, within our ability, let's use them as our outline as we delve into the psalm more deeply this afternoon. My first point is bring it on the right spirit. It says, shout for joy to Yahweh. Make a joyful noise. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. What will be our attitude when we are watching, for example, a basketball game or hockey. I know they won Toronto Maple Leafs 2-0 now. So imagine during a game, during a crunch time, the visitors are up by two points and it's five seconds left. Then in a basketball game, you know, uh, DeMar holding the ball, you know, the clock is ticking, 
three, three, down to three seconds and pass it to Lowry, then Lowry pass it, give it back to DeMar, then, then Lowry uh, step on the three-point line and he was able to shoot it just right before the time and they won by one po point. He missed it. <laughs> no, they won by one point. And all those people inside the, that stadium, they are cheering. They, they have that excitement, that joy, right? Churches aren't the only ones to celebrate homecoming, for example. School all across the country um, uh, celebrate homecoming with, with the annual homecoming dance and crowning the homecoming king and queen, right? Likewise, college or universities all across the country celebrate homecoming with, with, with a basketball game, with a big football game, or a hockey against their arch rival. Milita military troops returning from, from war celebrates a big homecoming with their family at the military base where they are stationed. One thing each of us, or one thing each of those homecoming or celebration have in common is there's a lot of cheering, right? They're cheering. They're full of excitement, full of joy. There's cheering on the high school homecoming king and queen, and there's cheering for, for the home team who just won the championship game, and there's cheering for the troops returning home from the war. Church homecoming are somewhat different. A church homecoming... We don't crown homecoming king and queen or have a big dance or, or cheering up a, a, a sports team. But if ever there was a time when the Lord Jesus cheered on by God's people, it's now. Tell the person beside you, if you want to cheer the Lord, right, and cheered on by God's people, it's now. Especially now it's Thanksgiving, right? We have a lot of reason for us to cheer the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Amen? Amen. It's more than cheering, actually. It's worship. It's worship. As the Lord returns, draw closer with each passing time. The time is now for us to wake up, shape up, Stand up and look up. Not to lay down. Let down, sit down or look down. We should be doing the opposite way. We should wake up. Our spirit should be in tune, awake, right? I know it's hard right now in a Sunday afternoon. That's why this is one, one thing that we, we, we need to thank God for. Three o'clock, we're here. Right? Instead of doing something else. The body says, I want to sleep. I want to relax. But you chose to be here. Because there's a reason for you. There's a reason within your hearts that you know when you know that you need to be here. Praising God. Cheering on. Worshiping Him. Amen? Verse 1, this is actually a repetition of Psalm 98.4. The original word signifies a glad shout, such as loyal subjects give when their kings appear among them. Our happy God should be, should be worshipped by happy people. Tell the person beside you, should be worshipped by happy people. You can do better than that. You can do better than that. Right? We can do better than that. Right? Our happy God should be worshipped by happy people. We are happy people because we have a happy God. A cheerful spirit is keeping with his nature, his acts, the gratitude we should cherish for, for his mercies. In every land, God's goodness is seen. Therefore, in every land, we should praise him. Psalm 98, shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Burst into jubilant ju a song with music. It says burst into jubilant song. Wow. Make a joyful noise. 
the psalmist say, don't just whisper or mumble or steer around. We might be afraid, you know, uh, you're, we are going to disturb the person next to us. Shout with all your might. Let the whole world know that the sovereign God of all creation is with us. He loves us and he's on our side. Amen? Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Let's break it down and see what he is commanding us to do. The reason we can shout, make noise joyfully to God, because we know him and because he deserves all the praises and adoration. Amen? First, there is the word make. Make, it's a verb formed by putting um, different parts together, com combining uh, substance. You need to construct, you need to produce, um, build. This word means to make music that we create and, and produce. It's like, uh, uh, it's like a, uh, to compose and putting melody to some lyrics that touches our hearts from its tune and melody. We can feel the beat, right? The beat that keep on pounding in our hearts. And we can't contain it. We can't contain it. And our hearts will, you know, about to explode with gladness. And we say, shout for joy, sing his praises unto the Lord. As our hearts is filled with the goodness and love of God. Amen? Next, there is the word joyful. What kind of noise? In contrast to sad noise, like wailing, but instead it's a joyful one. These words means it's a feeling, expressing or causing great pleasure and happiness. Christian joy is a good feeling. Tell it to the person beside you. Christian joy is a good feeling. In the soul, because it produces by the Holy Spirit, as it causes us to see the beauty of Christ in the Word and in the world. Lastly, we have the word noise. The Hebrew word for noise is ruah, meaning to shout in applause, to cry out in triumph. It is energetic word that comes straight from the heart. Imagine anything that it's coming from the heart. You know, you can't contain it. It will produce a great noise. This word means to raise a shout. A while ago, we are, we are singing, crying out to, to shout and declaring the goodness of God. Right? Because we can't contain Him in our hearts. It refers to a ringing cry. That pierces even the eardrums. It means to break forth with or to burst. It sends an imaginary of someone who is full of emotion. That they are unable to containing themselves. You can't contain your, yourselves. When all these things are put together, make a joyful noise. It is calling on the people of the Lord to raise the anthem of praise from their hearts to the Lord. Church, when all these things are put together, make a joyful noise. It is calling on the people of the Lord to raise an anthem of praise from the hearts, from their hearts, from our hearts to the Lord. This is a challenge. This is a challenge to participate in the public praise of God's worth and works. Again, this is, this is a challenge to participate in the public praises of God's worth and works. Psalm 41, 3, it says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He brought me up out of the pit of destruction, out of the miry clay, and he set my feet upon the rock, making my footstep firm. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to, God, to our God, many will see and fear and will trust in the Lord. Psalm 41 3 tells us what the Lord did for us when He saved us. 
this verse itself tells us that he put a new song in our mouth. No longer was I now singing for the world, but we're singing for, 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 you know, for God. Now I'm singing to the Lord who sought me, who bought me, and, and who brought me out. Here we are told to approach the Lord our God with singing the ringing cry, the shout of joy. Our hearts will be so filled with the wonder of who he is and what he has done in our life. When God is in our life, we will not be able to hide him. We will not be able to, to keep him a secret for very long. We can't uh, have someone the size of God in our heart he will just show up when we raise our hands, right? Sometimes he will run up to our, to, to our throat and over your, your vocal cords and make, and make your, you shout. Shout and sing praises. The fact is, you will not be able to hide him. You will not be able to contain him. Once our spirit is filled and aligned uh, in his spirit, we will shout for joy and sing his praises unto the Lord. It just reminds me of that song, shout for joy, sing his praises, right? A lot of people are cheering that, you know, clapping their hands during the concert. We are thinking of the artist and the song, but we're forgetting about that song as, you know, pointing out to God. That we really need to, to shout, to praise him because he is worthy to be praised. Amen? We need to cheer. We need to worship. For us to bring the attitude of gratitude, bring it on the right spirit. Bring it on the right service. Serve Yahweh with gladness. Serve the Lord with gladness. The word serve means to be bondaged to. It refers to doing whatever the master tells his subject to do. When we got saved, we became the Lord's property. It says on 1 Corinthians 6.20, You were bought at a price, therefore honor God with your bodies. Honor God with your bodies. Therefore, we have to do what, what he tells us to do without even a question. Or hesitation. Just like in mili you know, military people, they just obey without even saying a word, right? Obey first. Some for folks don't like that already. They don't like anyone telling them what to do. Well, if you don't like that, then you ain't gonna like this either. He tells us that we don't use much, that we, you know, he tells us that we are to serve him with gladness. You know, gladness, this little word means mirth. This is a word that we don't use much in modern times. Mirth, it's just like uh, you're being amused. That's why we have an amusement park, right? When you go for a ride, you, you, you have that thrill, right? Enjoying that ride. You, you scream, you shout. This verse is telling us that we are to serve the Lord with laughter. With gladness. We are to be filled with love for him. That regardless of what he asks us to do, we are going to be tickled to death to do it. You know, imagine that you are tickled to death just to do it. This is the attitude that filled David's heart. In Psalm 122, 1, he was filled with the mirth when it was time to go to church. Church, are we bringing that excitement every time we come? The word gladness is an interesting word. It carries the meaning of being wide-eyed open. It brings the mind of unvarnished joy of, 
of a child. When, when something happens that they like, you know, it affects their entire body. The mouth feels, uh, you know, the mouth just, just, just flies open and, and the, eyes, the eyes get wide and the, their face will, will light up. If we are serving in spirit, not in the flesh, we don't feel tired in serving the Lord. Because the reason people get tired is they are doing it in the flesh. Again, if we are serving in spirit and not in the flesh, we, we don't feel tired in serving the Lord because the reason people get tired because they are doing it in the flesh. First, is it the spirit inspired that you do such task? Is it spirit empowered that accomplish the task? Or is it spirit motivated why you did the task? Wow. When we bring with us the, the right attitude in serving, there is joy, there is fullness, there's fullness of life. There is fullness of life within us, inside of us. Real servants make themselves available. Servants don't fill up their time with other pursuits that could limit their availability. They want to be ready to jump into service when they are called on. Much like a soldier. A servant must always be standing for the duty. 2 Timothy 2 verse 4, it says, No soldier in active service entangles himself in the affair of everyday life so that he may please the one who enlisted him as a soldier. Wow. Who enlisted us? Do we know when we serve? That's a big opportunity for us to embrace when we are called to serve Him. If we only serve Him when it's convenient, we're not that real servant. Real servant do it what's needed, even if it's inconvenient. Right? Real servant, they do it even if it is inconvenient. Are you available to God anytime? Can He make changes in your in, in, in your plans within 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 without you even becoming resentful? As a servant, you don't get to pick and choose when or where will you serve. Being a servant means giving up the right to control our schedule and allowing. Allowing God to interrupt whatever He needs to. If we will remind ourselves at the start of every day that we are God's servant, interruption won't prostrate us that much. Nah, it won't prostrate us because our agenda will be whatever God wants us to bring in our life. Amen? Our agenda will be his agenda for us. Servants see interruption as divine opportunities or divine appointments for ministry. And we, and we should be happy for, for those opportunities to, to practice serving. To serve God is to give what we have, our time, our talent, treasure, and our temple, the body. And we use it with a joyful heart, right? For us to bring on the right attitude of gratitude, we need to bring it on the right spirit, bring it on the right service, and bring it on the right submission. Verse 3 says, Know the Lord is God. We need to submit to the to the to the person of God. We are told to know that the Lord is God and the word means to make a distinction. We 
we are to know that He and He alone is God. Do we, do we, know, do we know Him personally? Do you know who your God is? Is your God the, the God of the Bible? Probably we are wondering how we can know Him. Well, the answer should be simple. What do you give the most of your time? Attention, resources, talents, money. Whatever the answer is your God. Have you made the right distinction and acknowledge God as the God of your life? By the way, if we, we ever get nailed it down in our soul, He is the God that He is superior to, to every other person, thing, or activity in our life. Who is your God today? Are you submitted to His will? Or our own very, you know, our own will? Submit to God, to the person of God. Submit to the purpose of God. We were reminded that we are what we are because He has made us. The word simply means to take some material and fashion something new out of it. You see, God took the clay, then he formed it, right? He formed it in a new creation out of it by his power, regardless of what we are before. We are what we are by the power of God. Amen? 1 Corinthians 15.10, uh, it says, by the grace of God, I am what I am, and His grace to me was not without effect. No, I work harder than all of them, yet not. But by the grace of God that was with me. You know, we need to realize that God saved us for a purpose. He didn't just redeem us to keep us out of darkness. He didn't redeem us for us to feel good. He didn't just do it so that we would look down on our long religious nose, right? He saved us so that we might serve Him. He has planned for our life and we need to serve that purpose he will use us if we will serve Him. Amen? Submit to the person of God, submit to the purpose of God, and submit to the promise of God. We are the sheep of His pasture, and this statement simply reminds us that we belong to Him. And just as a shepherd um, look after the welfare of His flock, so our Lord look after with, with, with infinite care. David actually has nailed down into his own life. You know, most of us probably know Psalm 23, right? And you and I need to get nailed it down in our lives. If we ever grasp the truth that the Lord is my shepherd, I will forever be transformed. We would realize that we, we will never have to worry about the things that we need because He will provide it, right? We will never have to fear anything in any areas of our life because we have His promises. We have His guarantees that everything is under His control. If you are safe, you belong to Christ, the chief shepherd. He will take care of the needs that arise in our life. If you are his sheep, he will take care of it. If he, if he can't, then he isn't much of a God. 
but He will. Submit to the person of God. Submit to the purpose of God. Submit to the promise of God. Submit to the plan of God. Many Christians have a wrong view of the plan and the will of God. They experience great fear and anxiety as they seek God's direction for their lives. Other, they, 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 they want to know His plan to do His will, the will of God. But only of it doesn't conflict with their own. Wow. Still other view the will of God as sort of a bitter medicine groaning over where God might lead them next. Here's the truth. The will of God and the plan of God both comes out of the heart of God. God's will is the expression of His love. And we do not joyfully submit to the will of God. We miss out the blessing. We miss out the blessing He has for us. You know, the most mature Christians are those who are most dependent on God. Those truly mature Christians are the ones who say to the Lord, not my will, but yours. And they mean it. And they are happy about it. They are full of joy. Again and again in the scripture, we see that those who submit joyfully to the will of God get the victory. Are we submitting to the will of God? We are victorious because we are champions. Amen? Are we champions? Is that the sound of a champion? Yes. God blesses us with 25 years of goodness, faithfulness. Next week, we will be celebrating it. We will be seeing how wonderful He is. That's why we need to bring that cheer, that heart of worship, that gladness, that joy. It's not just a celebration. It's more than celebration. It's bigger than life. We should be grateful about it because God gave it to us and we are part of it. Amen? In James 4, 13, 15, it says, Now listen, you who say today or tomorrow we will go to, the, to this and to that city, spend the year there and carry on business and make money. Why you do not even know what will happen tomorrow? Instead, you ought to say, if it's the Lord's will, we will leave and and thus this or that. Was James actually saying that we should not have our own plan for our life? Was he saying that we should never set goal for our life? Drifting from one season to the next? Not at all. Here James is cautious, you know. And he, he, James uh, 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 cautions us for making plans based on our own selfish desire and ambitions and then praying, God bless my plan instead. We, we must take time to pray and diligently prioritize the Lord's plan over our own, knowing that His ways are better than our own. Wow. First Peter 5, 6, it says, Humble yourself, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that He may lift you up in due time. Church, for us to be able to bring it on the, the attitude of gratitude, we have to bring it on the right spirit, bring it on the right service, bring it on the right submission, and bring it on the right sacrifice. It says, enter his gates with thanksgiving, for the Lord is good. In the tabernacle and, and, and temple days, the priests had better not enter the presence of the Lord without the right sacrifice. To do so meant death. Hebrew 9, 7 says, But only the high priest entered the inner room, and, the only once a year, and, and, and that only once a year, and never without blood, which he offered for himself and for the sin 
for the sins the people had committed in ignorance. Wow. Thank God. Thank God that we do not have to offer a blood sacrifice anymore this afternoon. Jesus Christ already taken care of that forever. Amen? And that's one reason for us to be joyful, to be thankful. Amen? Hebrew 10, 10, 14, it says, 10 to 14, it says, And by the will we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Days after day, even priests stands and perform his religious duties again and again. He offers, and, and offers the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But when, when this priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sin, he sat down at the right hand of God. And since that time, he waits for his enemies to be made his footstool. For by what sacrifice he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. Amen. Church, notice the emphasis on one and once. Yet there is still a sacrifice that people of God need to bring. It isn't your money, it isn't our money, although we should bring our tithes and, and offering. It isn't our attendance, although we should be uh, uh, at church assembly at every possible opportunity. There is just one sacrifice that the Lord expects every saint to bring to church when they come. And it's revealed in these two last verses. We are told to bring the sacrifice of praise. Tell the person beside you, we are to bring the sacrifice of praise. God's house is to be place, it's, it's to be a place of worship unto Him. We are given an invitation to come into His presence. We are told to enter into His gates. Gates are defensive weapons and are usually closed at, uh, at all outsiders. However, through the, through the blood of Jesus Christ, we are no longer the enemies of God. But now we are sons. We are sons and daughters. The gates which, which once, you know, before was closed to us are now open. It's open wide. We are the big, we are beacon to enter into the presence of God as we bring to him the sacrifice of praise for our salvation. Next, we are invited to enter into to his courts and with praise. Know that we are not just to allow access to, to, to the outer limits of his sanctuary, but we are invited to walk. You know, we are invited to walk into the throne room where we can meet him in all of his glory. Amen? No wonder the psalmist challenges us to be, to be thankful and to, to bless his name. We are counseled to bring um, the right sacrifice when we enter. We are told to bring the sacrifice of praise. Verse 5 gives the reason for praising his name. Amen? Praise God for his goodness. We are told that the Lord is good. The Lord is good? All the time, the Lord is? Amen. This seems like a limited description of God. But the word means good, pleasant, beautiful, delightful, glad, joyful, precious, correct, righteous. It can also mean expensive or extravagant. Everything God does in an expression of his goodness, we can praise our God because he is good. Regardless of what happens in our life, God is good. No matter how things turn out, God is still good. Therefore, praise him with all our might. Praise him for his goodness. Amen? Praise God for his goodness. Praise God for his grace. Next, we are told to God's mercy is everlasting. We can, we can praise God because he is constantly extending his mercy to us. 
as we go through life. As we all know that mercy is defined not getting what we deserve. We live in the time when, you know, everyone wants to, what, everyone wants what's coming to them. Is it, you know, not me. If I got what was coming to me, I will get hell. If I got what I deserve this afternoon, I'd experience the undiluted wrath and fairness of the Almighty God. Instead of that, God deals with us. It deals with me in mercy. He holds back his wrath from, from our life. You know, he, his wrath from, from uh, rats off of, from our life. Why? 2,000 years ago, God sent forth his only begotten son. He took my place. He took your place. took our place. You know, in that cross. As he was dying, God looked at Jesus and saw our sin. He saw us hanging there that day. And he poured out his wrath into the person of his own son. God extinguished his wrath towards us that day. And now, we enjoy mercy. We enjoy mercy. And this mercy will be exhausted. We will never use it up. He makes us fresh batch every day. That's why it's fresh. It's new every morning. That's good reason for us to praise the Lord. Amen? Praise God for His goodness. Praise God for His grace. Praise God for His guarantee. We are told that God's truth endureth to all generation. Simply stated, while the years pile up, not a single promise of God's word will fail. He never fail. You see, God cannot lie. And what He has promised will be as good in 10,000 years as it was instant He promised it. Church, what he tells us, that he loves us so much that you can count on, count on him. When he tells you he'll save you to come to him, count on it. When he tells you that he will take care of everything, your needs, count on it. If he tells you that he's coming back to get you, you better count on it. If he tells every one of us that he will keep you safe, you can count on it. Suffix it to say that the Lord tells you anything at all, you can count on it. And that is a good reason again to praise God. There's a lot of good reason for us to be thankful. There's a lot of reason for us to praise him. He is indeed worthy of our praise. There are some practical ways to develop the spirit of gratitude that will help us gain and maintain um, uh, an attitude of gratitude in our life. We need to take note, take inventory, and take action. Take note, this means to, to live with awareness. We have a great deal to be thankful for. Take note of all the things he gave us. Try to become aware. Open our eyes to the world around you. It will shock you. But it will also cause you to be grateful. That's why, you know, it, 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 it's, it's very encouraging every time a preacher or a missionary you know, share their experience. You, you, you got to go there. Because once you go and see the other world that your eyes haven't seen, you'll be having a different perspective in life. Everything that you have, you will be thankful for. You should be thankful for clean water. Others, they don't have the privilege or or, or 
you know, the means to have a clean water. We are thankful and grateful having our celebration here with, you know, with, with comfort, with AC. I've been to a celebration wherein I'm just wearing a shirt and I'm sweating really bad. Sweating, sweating. We should be thankful and grateful. Those are the means that we need to celebrate and praise God. Take inventory of your blessing. There's that old song. I don't know the, lyric, the, the, the melody of it. It says, count your many blessings. When upon your life's below you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged, thinking all it's lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Have you stopped counting your blessing in your life lately? Many of us have that tendency to, to focus on what's wrong, which gives us the distorted picture of, of life. If we focus on, on the wrong things, we will never see the good things. If we focus on wrong things, we won't never see the good things. We will miss it. Take inventory of the blessing and stop focusing on the things that could go wrong. Next, take action. Turn your attitude of gratitude into action of appreciation. Sometimes, you know, I myself, there are opportunities that, you know, there are times that we, we can even say thank you. We find it awkward. Being thankful full of joy, gladness, should be who we are. It should be easy for us to thank someone. Thank you for, for your laughter. Thank you for, 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 for being here with me. Thank you for a wonderful day. Thank you for the traffic. Every day I, I, I go to work driving 401, Don Valley, Gardener, Downtown Toronto, wow. Lord, thank you for the traffic. You taught me how to be, you know, patience. Patience. Thank you, Lord, for, for giving me my wife, reminding me of take it easy, slow down, right? Give way, right? We need to listen to people around us because God is using each and every one of us, reminding us that we should be grateful, reminding us that we should be thankful. Do something good for someone else. God has given you plenty to share. God didn't give it to you, you, you know, for your own, for your own benefit. He placed it in your hands so that, so that to, you will be able to see what kind of servant you will be. Wow, that's a good, the plan of God. He's ahead of us. He gave us all we have to be, you know, his person to be his ambassador so you can do with the same thing that he will do. Jesus said that when we act in kindness, blessings others with even as much as a cup of, of, of water, it is though that we have done it unto him. That's why you need to stop, look, and listen. Don't just get caught in the busyness of life. Take time to, to stop and look around you. That there's a lot of things to be grateful for. There's a lot of things that we, we should be thankful for. We don't need to be impatient. Because God gave us that victory already. He gave us that gladness so that we just come before Him and praise Him with gladness. So we can just shout and praise Him. Amen? 
and do it while you are here to see the good it will do. You know, even when we are here at church worshiping, someone has said that there are two kinds of worshipers, a flat landers and the highlanders. Flat landers, they, they live um, in only two dimensions. They are well uh, versed in the faith. They know the, the lay of the land. They know the, 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 the exact routine. And they do love it. The only problem is that they are living in a horizontal realm. They don't know that there's an up and there's an up to life. Highlanders are simply flatlanders who have discovered worship. They are constantly pushing up, pushing up, up, up to experience God. What a privilege we have. What a privilege we have been afforded to have an audience with the king. Church, let us not put it, you know, and take it for granted. Let us do what is needed following the protocol to meet with him, the secret of, you want to, to know the secret of living a, stressful, a stressful life, a stress-free life, is to live a life of gratitude. Again, the secret of living a stress-free life is to live a life of gratitude. Not sweating on the small stuff, you know, but praising God from whom all blessing flow throughout the day. We need to take note, take inventory, take action for us to get started. We need to stop. We need to look. We need to listen. Get interested. Get inventory. Be involved. You need to be magnified. You need to be identified so that you can apply We should be thankful because, you know, to be, just to be alive. Be thankful to be alive. Consider the alternative to be alive is to have the potential to do something creative, something constructive, and something beneficial. If it's only to feed the, you know, things that we need, we need to be thankful for the gifts of love, to love and to... Be loved, turn existing into living. Be thankful for the gift of time. Each and every one of us has, you know, 24 hours every day, just like any, anybody else, even the president, the prime minister. But use it just about any way you choose. Be thankful for the, for, for, for the air we breathe, the water we drink. The food you eat, the food we eat, they are not just, you know, for us to sustain our life. They give us the strength. They give us the pleasure. Be thankful for the gift of color. Can you imagine a glorious sunset in black and white? Be thankful for the gift of colors. We should be challenged by that, being thankful for different colors. It's an urgency that we are called to bring all people from all walks of life, all nations. Be thankful for the gift of music. It can warm your heart and speak to your soul. More than anything else, be thankful for a God who loves you and has proven that Love beyond all doubts by sacrificing his only son to redeem you and I from our sinful nature and once and for all be reconciled to himself. Again, take a moment to make a list of all those things that you can think to be thankful for. Then offer them up to the Lord. Offer them up to the Lord in praise and thanksgiving. Church, it's a matter of gratitude, taking stock of your life 
and how God has created, created you in His image and empowered you with His Spirit and blessed you with the gifts of creativity, imagination, and love, and being grateful. Above all, it's recognized how God has proven His love once and for all through the death and resurrection of Jesus to open the door of to, to a loving, lasting relationship with God and all creation. Church, look around us. It will move you to thanksgiving. Look within us. It will move us to thanksgiving. Look above us. It, it will move us to thanksgiving. Thankfully, we, you know, there are portions in the scripture like the one that we have read this afternoon in which we can find not only the challenge and call to be thankful, but also plenty of the reason why we should thank the Lord for his goodness towards us. May I call the worship team. Gratitude is always to be expressed. We are commanded to give thanks. A grateful person will be happier person. A grateful person will be healthier person. A grateful person will reflect the goodness of God. Many reasons why must you, know, you give thanks? Why must we give thanks? We are given the admonition to thank the Lord for who He is and what He has done. We are told on how to thank Him. And when, where to thank Him? Everywhere, every moment. He is worthy of praise. He is worthy of service. He alone is God. He is worthy of our praise. And God is good. Once, one of the lessons that I've learned is that attitude can be our greatest asset. Take note. One of the lessons that we can learn is that attitude can be one of our greatest assets. Ultimately, our attitude is our choice. Neither negative people nor negative circumstances can, can, can control our attitude. It's ultimately up to us to choose the attitude that we have. Every minute is filled with choices, choices that you, you can draw closer to God or farther away from Him. Choosing life means choosing God. Choose wisely. Choose life. Choose God. It's a choice to trust God. Even when the road ahead seems uncertain. Is your current attitude one of your greatest assets? Are you bringing the right attitude or the right things to church? Does your life presently demonstrate a sense of gratitude? A sense of gratitude to God. If we are not thankful, it is because we are blind. Blinded to the truth of God that God has blessed us even, there, 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 you know, even in these confused times. Is there a little thanksgiving today because many have chosen to leave God out of their lives? Is there a little thanksgiving today because many have chosen to leave God out of their life? That is the reason that we have so many issues, challenges, struggles, domestic and family problems such as divorce, child abuse, and so forth. That is why probably crime is very rampant in our world today. Are we thankful? I trust you are because of what God has reminded us through the message. Is there joy in your life? Does it show? 
Have you demonstrated your attitude or your attitude or your gratitude to Christ lately? Do you have a grateful spirit? Can you see some room of improvement in, in, in your gratitude? Are you willing to do anything about it? Has the Lord spoken to some areas of your life that needed attention? Maybe you are filled with His praises as you used to be. For some reason, just, you know, going to church is more difficult than it's, it's used to be for you, for you and me. And we all know that we need to deal with it before the Lord. Maybe we have never been saved and, and, and want to get no, to, know, to know this wonderful Lord. Maybe you haven't been saved. And you want to get to know this, this Savior. Are you bringing the right spirit, the right service, the right submission, the right sacrifice? Are you ready to change so that you can bring the right attitude of gratitude? It says, a peaceful person is not a person who always in a good situation, but rather a person who always has a good attitude in every situation. Going forward, are you to allow yourselves, ourselves, to have that good attitude in every situation? If you're struggling with this, come. The altar is open. Let's remind, let's mind the Lord and as he calls you, as, you, as he calls each and every one of us to come, the altar is open. Come before him and, and, and have that joyful song. Come with him with, with a shout that turns to song. Come and bring your, your, your offering of gratitude to, to, the, to, the king, to the kings of kings. To the king of kings. Being in the presence of the Lord shall result in thanksgiving, in humility, in being aware of our own sin, in wanting to repent, to confess and receive the work of God. God's grace is sufficient. It's a plea from the psalmist itself. You know, it's a plea to the hearts of his readers to look into the Lord and exalt him. Church, if there are times that we fail to thank God, offer them before the Lord. Come and give, you know, thanks in all circumstances. Be extravagant. Be extravagant in your worship. Come, if you hear the call of praise, the call to serve, the call to, to know God personally. There is that call to appreciate Him more. Let us all come before the Lord. Amen.